called Receive, and it's Healing Hurts. So there were a collection of studies by scientists from Japan that the results were that water can be impacted by thoughts, negatively or positively. This first piece is infused water with two different hertz. Uh, one is 639 hertz, and that is a level that's associated with a pure positive love. And secondly is 528 hertz, which is, again, just like a love frequency. So that, that is infusing the water that can be consumed. On top of that are my own words, which is words of love and words of um, care, and two different layers of it. Our three original sound pieces, again, first was the Hambone Miss Mary piece, which is again archiving my family history, my history of Hambone, and archiving the story of black women from the South. The second is Field Song, 1892, and it was composed on the steps of the Field Museum. And the Field Museum was a site of the World's Fair. That particular year was kind of the first year that they introduced the Filipino community to the world, right? And so that's why I chose that particular site, because that sat with me. And there is two keys that are playing consistently. They are a fifth apart, a fifth from the key of F, a fifth above and a fifth below, because each step is five inches. And then the third was the excavation of language, so that the sonics of the English letters that we see aren't always resonant for native tongues, you know. And so the third piece is expression of phrases, ancestral, new lines, healing, mother tongue. And that one is titled Mother Tongue Speak, and it is more sonic expression of those particular phrases, but that are not necessarily English phenomes that we're used to. So it's layered over the sound of live drums from the drumming from a, the dance session that were the root of my dance experiences. So I had began dancing with Sambula uh, Ethnic Dance Company. So it's pretty much the only Haitian dance company here in Chicago. And I was trained with them and they allowed me to record some of the dance classes. So it was layered over those drums. The phonemes that we're used to in the English language actually exist in, in other ways. M doesn't necessarily always resonate as M, you know, in, in various experiences. It can be M, or M, or M. That is also an interactive piece to allow you to play around with the phonemes and pull from different sonic instruments. One particular piece that really in my investigative like archiving and session process was it's called it's Cambon and it's a more percussive dance, but you know when drums were taken away, what else did the enslaved Africans have but their feet and their bodies? And so that became the ways that the time was enjoyed was to continue to make the music. So this Cambon, you know, this Cambon is not only a personal experience, but it also relates to the, the larger picture. One of the reasons why it was so important for me to consider the concept of archiving was we don't have family Bibles, so we don't have the family, you know, an actual hard copy of the memories. You know, at this particular stage, humanity has become quite digital. So that how do we integrate those two? Even the opportunity to incorporate music into our interactions, and that being another vessel. And plus, it's, it's, it's a dying art. It's not passed on. There aren't schools that continue to teach this handbone or um, patent juba. A lot of this work was very investigative. So I worked with my body and really interrogated like 
the movements that were pulled, what was being said in my hands, my fingers. I also work with my family so that there are a couple pieces that are very archive based so that I did take the opportunity to have community with my father, for example. After the conversations, what happens next? How do we move that forward?